This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Unette Gentry. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. Today's news is also brought to you by Gunny's Air Conditioning and Heating. New service and repair. Call Gunny's, 775-727-6800. Thank you so much for joining us here on KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio. Happy Cinco de Mayo. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Unette Gentry. Yes, it is Thursday, May 5th. Well, a windswept fire in North Pahrump burned two structures to the ground and heavily damaged a third. Pahrump Valley Farm Rescue Chief Scott Lewis says initial reports were vague on the location of that fire. Crews were dispatched at approximately 1 o'clock in the morning for a report of an unknown type fire. There was some confusion as to exactly where the, the fire was located. It was on the very northwest end of the valley, and um, there were several properties in the area that they thought might be on fire, including a possibility of a hemp farm fire. It was determined to be off of Cabo in a close proximity to uh, Bell Vista. As crews arrived, they found multiple structures, including a Class A motorhome that were well involved. There were no immediate life safety issues. There were exposures. The fire was wind driven. It had an overabundance of personal property stored within a, a detached garage, which was well involved, and it was moving to a residential structure. The investigation revealed that the initial area of origin or the source of the ignition was in a Class A motorhome. That was well involved. It extended to a detached multi car garage, which was, had a, a significant uh, amount of personal property stored within it. And then the wind took the fire from those two directly to a wood frame structure that was offset on the property. Crews came in, commanded, uh, commenced a defensive exterior attack. This is an area without hydrants, so we had to bring the water with us via the tenders. It was a defensive exterior due to the heavy fire conditions, the heavy fire load, and the wind. So crews were able to control that fire within approximately 20 to 30 minutes after arrival. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue is also investigating the cause of another fire, this one at a homeless campsite here in Pahrump. Chief Scott Lewis says that black smoke drew a lot of attention, but thankfully the fire itself was contained to a very small area. Yesterday afternoon we were dispatched to the area of Highway 160 for an unknown type fire. As crews were responding, we found that in fact a homeless camp had started to burn. Sheriff's deputies were on location reporting there was no life safety issues, but the homeless camp was in a group of salt cedars, so it was spreading. It wasn't wind driven, but it was just enough to create a, a thick black smoke column, which was uh, gathering a lot of attention through the, the community. So as we arrived on location, we confirmed that we had a working fire in a homeless camp. It was located in a group of salt cedars. As we investigated further, we found some personal property mixed in with some rubbish and uh, unknown ignition sources under investigation at this point, but there are no injuries. Well, if you drive anywhere, it's obvious an election is just around the corner. Political signs are everywhere, including places that they shouldn't be. The Nevada Department of Transportation is posting notices on local political signs stating that they are on NDOT's right-of-way. They're also stating that one sign near frontage road is too large. Signs are allowed to be a maximum size of 4 by 8 feet. Courtesy stickers were posted on some of them Wednesday, and if the signs or location is not corrected, the signs will be removed by NDOT. The department says that they have painted the ground in the area where the signs are posted to show where the signs should be placed in relation to the road easement. If the public has a complaint about a sign that may be obstructing their view on a highway or roadway, they can contact the Nye County Sheriff's Office, the Nevada Department of Transportation, or Nye County Public Works. A domestic violence call here in Pahrump ends with the arrest of one woman. Brad Francis tells us what happened. Tuesday morning, Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies responded to a Pahrump home for a reported domestic incident. They found an older man, who officers later determined to be the victim, standing near the garage of the residence. In the arrest report, officers say that man was bleeding from his left shin and right forearm. The victim, who was standing holding onto his walker, showed officers the back of his head. Police say they could see a laceration and evidence of fresh bleeding. When deputies entered the home, they met with Terry Jans Moore. She told them she came out of her room and got into an argument with the man and went on to 
to say he hit her with his walker and punched her in the throat. In their report, officers say they did not see any physical marks on her throat nor any other injuries to substantiate her allegations. The victim told a different story. He told officers he was pouring himself a cup of coffee when Jans Moore came out of her room screaming at him. He says she jerked his walker away from him while shoving him. As a result, he fell to the ground, which caused his injuries. Deputies say they observed blood on the floor near the kitchen island and a cup of coffee on the counter. As a result of their observations and statements from those involved, officers arrested Jans Moore and booked her into the Nye County Detention Center on one count of abuse of an older or vulnerable person and one count of domestic battery. We'll have more news for you after the break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. This segment of News 25 is brought to you by Lisa Spahitz and Mike Plasmeyer at Country Financial Insurance. Auto, home, life, and commercial. 775-727-8920. Welcome back. A Cleveland Clinic study shows elderly people who have aortic stenosis and also take calcium supplements have a higher mortality rate. For those unfamiliar with aortic stenosis, restricts blood flow from the heart to the rest of the body. If you were taking calcium supplements and you had aortic stenosis, then what we found is that your chance of dying from aortic valve disease or chance of dying in general or needing aortic valve surgery was higher compared to the patients who were not taking calcium supplements. Dr. Samir Kapadia is a cardiologist for Cleveland Clinic and lead author on the study. He says calcium can cause stiffness in the blood vessels and heart valves, which is why it's so dangerous. He says for people who have aortic stenosis and are not getting enough calcium from their diet, then it may be worth it to take a calcium supplement. However, it's best to consult with their physician to be sure. With that being said, he advises against taking a calcium supplement just for the sake of it. He says it's important to know whether an individual is actually deficient in calcium, otherwise they could be taking too much. So I think one of the take-home messages is that if you are taking calcium supplements, you should at least look into it that why exactly you are taking it. And if you are taking it for a specific reason, confirm with your doctors or dietitians to say that this is not excessive to what you'd actually need. More than 2,600 people with aortic stenosis took part in the study, with the average age being 74 years old. And in more medical news, it's time to get some great advice from Spring Mountain Medical. In today's Medical Minute, Dr. Beraldo Vasquez talks about the importance of you getting your annual exam. This Medical Minute is brought to you by Spring Mountain Medical, healthcare the way you've always imagined it. Hi, I'm Dr. Beraldo Vasquez with Spring Mountain Medical, your hometown health and wellness provider. Today, I'm going to talk to you about getting an annual checkup. In our busy lives, we often ignore signs that our bodies give us about our overall health. Most of the time, these are small things that our bodies can overcome with diet and exercise. Sometimes our bodies are sickening a call for help. Either way, getting an annual checkup is a way of maintaining your health and ensuring that you are on top of issues that might limit your lifestyle or make you susceptible to further disease. If you've been putting off an annual exam, today is the day. Come see our providers and we'll make the experience pleasant, personal, and professional. To make it even easier, we accept most major insurances, including Medicare Advantage plans. Nothing should keep you from being your healthiest. You owe it to yourself. I'm Dr. Vasquez, and this has been a Medical Minute brought to you by Spring Mountain Medical. Thanks so much, Dr. Vasquez. Well, with summer temperatures right around the corner, you'll want to be prepared. That's, or that includes getting your air conditioner ready for the scorching heat. That's where Prompt Valley Air Conditioning comes in. Kenneth Patton says now is the time to act. First, you should be checking it for filters every 30 days, making sure you clean them replace them. What types of filters should a consumer use inside their AC unit? Nothing that's too restrictive, like your HIPAA filters you should not be using. It puts a strain on the uh, on the unit itself, on the air handler, and then that in turn 
hurts the outside linear too. Anything smaller than that, like four microns or something, is a good one to use. We get very hot in the summer, so you probably want to call us and have us come out and take a look at it for a summer service. We can do that and we clean out the unit and we check all the amps and everything else, the Freon levels, and make sure everything's running properly for summer. Our service call is $75. But you can get a discount through the Over the Hump Saver. They'll, if you show us their sale in there, we can give you a discount. You want to call us before anything happens, before you even turn it on. Have us come out and take a good look at everything and make sure everything's running properly. We do a duct cleaning, and if you call us, we can give you an estimate over the phone how much it is. And you really should be changing or doing this every, say, two years. You should be cleaning your vents. Because we have a lot of pollen in the air, a lot of dirt and dust, it won't prevent dust and dirt in your house, but it will keep your house properly clean. We do offer financing through Prump Valley Air Conditioning. We have a, a subcontractor we go through, and we can uh, finance that way. And we can also, um, Usually, sometimes, if it's the right situation, we can work with people. If you have an emergency, they should give you a call? Oh, definitely. Definitely give us a call. 775-727-7488. Uh, we try and be there within a couple of days mm -hmm. at the latest. So we always will work late if we have to. So give you a call for this uh, maintenance that you guys go have going on right now. Because you have open appointments right now, right? Yes, we do. We can get out there probably within the next day or so in most cases. All right, we'll have much more for you and your sports when we return. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. Welcome back. Well, if you're thinking about using a digital voice assistant, you have a few choices out there. Today, Josh Osborne from Great Computer Deals here in Pahrump has some advice for you and what you need to consider. Hi guys, Josh Osborne with Great Computer Deals. It's time for another quick tutorial, viewer question edition. One viewer asks, what's the difference between OK Google and Apple's Siri? To be honest, not a ton of difference. OK Google is obviously Google's voice assistant and is going to work best if you're using an Android phone or Google smart home devices. Siri is simply Apple's voice assistant, which accomplishes many of those same goals, but only works with Apple products. Don't forget, Amazon has Alexa, Samsung has Bixby, and there are many others. They're all trying to do the same thing, but should be chosen based on the type of hardware you're using. Pick the one that is most compatible with all of your electronics. Why trust a technician when you can trust a friend? Great Computer Deals is located at 1190 East Highway 372. Call us at 775-990-8833. All right, we're going to go to Doug Ferber right now with your sports. Hello, sports fans. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Speaking of which, Canelo Alvarez is ready to do battle at T-Mobile Saturday night. The Las Vegas Aces head to Phoenix for their season opener. Shea Langelaire continues to lead the Aviators, and the Silver Knights have their backs up against the wall in Colorado. I'm Doug Ferber. Mexico's own Canelo Alvarez will be seeking to recapture the WBA light heavyweight title Saturday night at T-Mobile. Alvarez, who is currently the undisputed 168-pound world champion, has a 57-1-2 and and record going into Saturday's big event against Russian Dmitry Bivol, who is 19-0. Alvarez's only professional loss came to Floyd Mayweather Jr. back in September of 2013. Both Alvarez and Bivol are 31 years old and seemingly in their primes. Alvarez held the light heavyweight title in 2019, but opted to unify the 168-pound class and vacated the light heavyweight title. Saturday, he's going after it once again against an opponent known to keep his opponents at a distance with his 4-inch height advantage and long reach. Alvarez is known for being patient. Oddsmakers favor Alvarez. Tickets are still available. This should be worth the price of admission. The Las Vegas Aces open their 2022 WNBA season taking on the Mercury tomorrow night in Phoenix. The Mercury knocked out the Aces in last season's semifinals, beating Las Vegas 3-2 in the series. The Mercury went on to lose the best of five in the championship series to the Chicago Sky in four games. This is a very new Aces team. A new head coach, Becky Hammond, who 2020 WNBA MVP Asia Wilson praises for what she brings to Las Vegas. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, Becky, she's she's a gem for sure. Uh, her energy, like I said, her energy is just, it brings us all in. It by, we're all bought into her and her basketball knowledge just rubs off on all of us. Returning guard Jackie Young said that this year's team will have a much different look than in the past. Our defense is just as, as important as our offense. Um, yeah, we know that we can, we can score the ball, but we just have to be able to defend and get stops. After tomorrow's game, the Aces host the Seattle Storm in their home opener Sunday at the Ultralight Arena at Mandalay Bay. The tip-off is set for 7 p.m. The Las Vegas Aviators have split their first two games of their six-game trip to Sacramento. Tuesday night, the River Cats edged Las Vegas 4-3, but catcher Shea Langelier continued his odd hitting, belting his 10th home run of the young season. On Wednesday night, the Aviators shut out the River Cats 5-0. Langelier doubled and went 2-5 for five to lift his batting average to 329. Parker Dunchy picked up the win for Las Vegas, tossing six shutout innings, allowing one hit while striking out six. The Aviators and River Cats go at it again tonight in Sacramento. The first pitch is set for 7.05 p.m. The Henderson Silver Knights lost their first Calder Cup tournament game last night to the Colorado Eagles 5-2. The Silver Knights trailed 2-0 heading into the third, but center Paul Cotter brought the HSK to within one at the 3-0-2 mark. From there, the Eagles kept pace, adding scores, and the Silver Knights couldn't keep up. Tomorrow night, these two teams go at it again in Colorado. It's a must-win for the HSK in this three-game series. The puck is set to drop at 6.05 p.m. The Vegas Golden Knights held their postseason press conference Tuesday. Head coach Pete DeBoer said he wants to come back, but will he? I'm sure we will hear much more in the coming weeks about the coach and one Robin Leonard. One last note, the Vegas Nighthawks will be at the Dollar Loan Center Sunday against the Northern Arizona Wranglers. Kickoff for that game is at 1 p.m. For KPVM 25 TV Sports, I'm Doug Ferber. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Nice day to be driving out to Amargosa. I'm going to go to that Cinco de Mayo event. That is going to be a beautiful drive, but watch out for the wind. John Kohler's going to tell us what you can expect on the roadways along with everyone else and the weekend forecast at the News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios. What a beautiful day we have in Pahrump today and up and down the state. Let's take a look. Fernley, 76, 81 in Fallon. Oh my gosh. Carson City, that's the cool spot. And they're still at 70 degrees. Beautiful day. Uh, total power, you see 80, 81 in Goldfield. Beatty at 88. Feels gritty great, don't you think? All right, Amargosa, 93. Not even the hot spot. That's Vegas, 96 today. And out in Death Valley, they're into triple digits. It's starting to feel like summer in Death Valley, 103 degrees. But here in the Paradise of Pahrump, well, let's take a look. 90 degrees, respectable. 91 just a little bit earlier. Southerly winds to 14 miles per hour all day long. Felt all right. Uh, sun rose this morning and all in its glory and promise for the hope of a new day at 546. And it's setting this evening at 734. Should be gorgeous under those partly cloudy skies. All kinds of cool colors in the skies and a low tonight of just 61 degrees. Bare nass. Winds calming down just a little bit southeasterly, 12 miles per hour. As we head into tomorrow, I'm going to say this is the best day all weekend. Yeah, it is. Look at that. 93 degrees, sunshine. And then what do we got? A couple days of clouds, clouds. And look at all that wind. We got four or five days of horrible wind. Uh, starting Sunday, Monday, it's going to get real serious. Uh, temperatures going to blow all the way down to 69 degrees by Tuesday as we start to rebuild. We'll have a couple of sunshiny days Wednesday, Thursday to look forward to 70, 78 degrees. I think we'll be back in no time, but uh, yeah, it's going to get kind of stinky around here on Saturday, Sunday. But bear with us. It's just a bump in the road, and then on we go. Back to the desk. Here's Deanna. All right, that's Thanks a pretty for, big dip over yeah, from that Saturday is, Sunday. Yeah, huh? going down to 69. Yeah. So you might need a light jacket that day. Be careful yeah. out there. Anyone with sinus issues like me, you'll know what I mean. It's that Mother's Day. Yes, it It'd is. Be good during the middle of the day for Mother's that's Day. That's right. Um, and happy early Mother's Day to you, so you and Thank my goodness. mom. 
Happy early Mother's Day to Ooh, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Yes. And to my mom, Susan, as well. That's right. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of News 25. Happy Cinco de Mayo. We hope you have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Yes. All right. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Good night. Good night.